Hello and and welcome to uh, to sunny Syracuse. Um, it really does look like this outside right now. Um, beautiful, beautiful day here. Um, uh, we wish that uh, all of you could uh, could could be here to join us, but um, uh, we are. We want you to know that we are we are thinking of you, and um, we hope that wherever you are in this world that um, you and your loved ones are, are healthy and, and, and staying safe. Um, so I have a, uh, a, 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 a short agenda for, uh, for today and then I'm happy to answer any, any questions that, that folks may have about uh, what's going on here at, here at Whitman. Um, the, uh, the three things that I thought I would cover, I'll, I'll talk a little, I'm sure everyone is curious about how things are, are going here on, on, on campus. Um, so I'll take a, a few minutes to update you on, on how this unusual fall semester is going so far. Then I'll spend um, some time talking about uh, our, our school strategy, um, our roadmap to um, Whitman's second century, which we just began last year and um, talk a little bit about our priorities as Whitman moves on from, from here. So um, as far as the, uh, this fall semester, it has been, I, I like to say that we're um, kind of uh, uh, in, in the third stage of this crisis. And uh, I'll come back to what that means a little, a little later in this, in this talk. But my first, uh, the, the, the first stage of the crisis was firefighting. Um, you know, just trying to figure out how do we, how do we pivot from in-person instruction and support of our students to uh, doing everything remotely and online. And then we went into uh, kind of a phase of, which was, I, I would call full-scale mobilization, um, trying to figure out how we were gonna reopen in the, in, in the fall and that's, that really um, uh, is, is really still ongoing because we have to we have to stay open as well, and I'll come to that in a minute. But um, back in back in May, our uh, our chancellor Kent Severud um, said that we we were going to try to reopen in the fall um, with the goal of delivering the the best possible uh, on campus education and uh, and experience for our students while minimizing the health risks, um, not just for our students and not just for our campus, but for the, the, the broader community as, as, as a whole. Um, and uh, the, way, the way this house was built required a, a, a couple of things. I, I, I guess the, uh, the, in some ways the second story of the house, what was, what was really kind of um, gonna hold the roof up here, um, was a was was a or two pillars. Um, one was um, uh, our faculty had to uh, figure out how to offer our curriculum uh, using a, a range and a combination of in-person courses, online courses, and hybrid formats, uh, because we expected students would be coming to us. Um, and it, they would have to deal with three different audiences, a group of students who were here on campus and in the classroom, uh, a group of students that were here on campus and watching what was happening in the classroom from perhaps from their dorm room or their off-campus apartment because we couldn't bring everybody to campus at the same time. And then a set of students, um, which turns out to be about 10 or 15% of our students, who decided not to return to campus, but to experience uh, the semester remotely completely. So this is a, a huge lift for our, our faculty. And um, you know, I can't thank them enough for what they did to, uh, to, to really adapt and, and, and reimagine in a lot of ways uh, their courses for this, for this new environment. And then the, the other half, our, our staff also had to figure out how are we gonna support um, our faculty in their online and hybrid teaching, and also how are we going to provide remote support for our students um, on everything from advising to career services, um, 
and, uh, and, and also at the same time, because it's uh, students' experience on campus is not just about uh, the courses, although um, we like to think that's the most important part. There's also all the co-curricular programming that, that goes on, and that also fell on our staff to reimagine. So much of the summer, which would normally be devoted to, on the faculty side, to, to, to research, um, maybe to, to coming up with some new courses, um, on the staff side to catching up on things that couldn't be done during the regular semester while we were in session and preparing for the next cycle. Um, all of those things had to be put aside and we had to, we had to do this um, kind of full adaptation to, uh, to get ready to teach in the fall. And then to support all that, um, the university as a whole had to do, had to do three really important things um, and, and uh, uh, get ready on, on, on three important fronts. One was to reconfigure all of our classrooms, our common spaces, um, all the signage around campus to uh, promote physical distancing and, and remind everyone of, uh, of what the things we, are, we, we need to do um, to stay together are. Um, and so for example, our classrooms, if uh, we have classroom that traditionally held 50 students, um, we had to reconfigure that either by taking uh, um, uh, chairs out or um, by uh, taping them off, um, reduce it to maybe 17 students. So, um, so that was a big capacity uh, challenge for, for, for all of us. Uh, the, the second pillar, and in some ways the most central one, um, was a very rigorous testing regime. Uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the campus um, really guided by some of our faculty in public health and working closely with county health officials devised a very strong capacity to test, trace, and treat students. Um, uh, and uh, so we tested students before they came to campus. Um, we <clears throat> tested them as they arrived on campus, um, tested them after they'd been here for a few weeks, um, and we're just going through completing another round of surveillance testing right now so that we can uh, so that we can stay on top of any uh, any inroads, any clusters that that are arising on campus. And then finally, the 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 third um, uh, kind of foundational pillar for uh, for um, the semester has been around um, the, the the stay safe pledge. Um, these are basically uh, protocols that all students have had to sign off on that they agree to wear masks, to socially distance, to regularly wash their hands, um, to uh, avoid large gatherings, um, uh, to participate in surveillance testing when it's offered and, and, and so on. Um, and so far, so I, I can show you at least graphically how this has worked so far. Um, so this is uh, a, uh, a screenshot of the, the university's coronavirus dashboard. And the, the way to read this, um, and, and in fact, you can, you can see we just had an, a, a jump in cases uh, yesterday, um, 16 new cases, um, as you can see in the, in the, in the blue box over, over here. But we've also, um, you, you can see kind of the course of the semester, the blue line here starting in early August, those are the, the number of recovered cases on campus. The orange line depicts the active cases on campus. And so you can see we've gone through two little uh, um, uh, mini surges um, so far. One in uh, mid-September, shortly after Labor Day, which was traced to some students traveling over Labor Day. And then we had a more significant outbreak that occurred in early October, uh, again, linked to, to student travel. Um, apparently a student went to Binghamton, which has become a bit of a hot spot, and, uh, and, and then brought the virus back, attended some uh, off-campus gatherings, and that led to uh, an outbreak that um, uh, that I, I think there were a total of about ninety cases that were that were that were related to that. Um, and that's since uh, since uh, we've recovered from that. But um, just starting yesterday, the latest round of surveillance testing uh, has turned up a new um, potential cluster, 
which uh, so far I understand has been traced to a, a couple of off-campus gatherings. And we're gonna be finding out really over the next few days if our test and trace capacity um, is gonna be able to again uh, track the, uh, the transmission chains that are going on in, in, our, in our campus community, track those transmission chains down and um, and stop them before they uh, before they go too far, and create an outbreak that um, that would that would cause us to pause uh, in person instruction and other in person activities, um, and that level the the the, the level at which we would do that. Um, uh, the state actually requires us if we reach 100 cases in a two week period, um, and we're in the middle of that two week period right now. If we reach 100 cases, we'll have to pause our in-person instruction, and so, um, and we may actually do that voluntarily. We may actually voluntarily pause beforehand if we think it would help us to contain the outbreak and stop us from having to uh, to be um, uh, have it be a mandatory pause. So we'll see how this uh, how this unfolds over the over the next few days, but. Um, as you can see, we've we've had some ups and downs before, so we're 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 getting a little used to it. We've uh, built up some resilience, I think, and some uh, some real confidence in our testing, tr uh, tracking, and uh, and treatment um, capacity. So um, so hopefully over the next few weeks that will that will work out fairly well. Um, just to give you a. a, a a little bit more of a picture by the numbers. So, so far since the beginning of the semester, um, the university has uh, um, conducted over 80,000 COVID tests um, to stay on top of things. Our positivity rate, um, we've gotten 250 positive cases across uh, about 245 or so of those are students. Uh, the, the remainder are, are faculty and staff. Um, so we've had 250 cases, so very low positivity rate overall um, at 0.3%. But um, as you saw from the from the previous graph, uh, it's really not about the overall positivity, but uh, about about positivity during the surges and the and, and the outbreaks. Um, uh, overall, you, uh, going back to teaching, um, Whitman has uh, offered most of its uh, sections uh, in with an in-person component. Um, we did move some sections online that were for very large courses um, or cases where we had faculty who would have been at significantly elevated risk from exposure to uh, to the to the virus. Um, but but so far over overall, um, at least uh, as of as of today, um, we've had very few cases traced to activities on campus. Almost everything has been happening off campus. We've had one case of transmission tied to a Syracuse University sponsored activity. It was a band practice. Um, and there have been uh, no cases uh, traced in class transmission yet, which um, when you think about uh, how we're in the 10th week, we just completed the 10th week here and we have 4,000 roughly classes per week held on campus it's pretty remarkable that we've held 40,000 classes without an in, uh, a case of in-class transmission so far. Um, but, but, you know, we can, uh, at least empirically so far, um, uh, this, is, this is because our, the measures that we put in place have been fairly successful and, and our students on the whole um, uh, have been extremely uh, good about following the uh, the stay safe protocols. Um, it's only really a very small handful of, uh, of of students and occasions that have 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 slipped from that. So that's uh, that kind of gives you an update on the COVID. Um, uh, another impact that COVID is having is on placement, um, and and so as you can imagine. Uh, between uh, the difficulty of interviewing in a in a in a pandemic, and the impact that the pandemic is having on on the economy, our placement results. Um, this is as of October first for last year's graduating class are not as 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 strong as uh, as we would like them to be, and that they've been the past several years. Um, you can see we're we're down uh, about 15% in the undergraduate program and down about 10% in the MBA. Um, uh, in, in, 
maybe the most comparable period for placement right now would be what happened during the 2008-2009 period during the, uh, uh, the, 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 the last economic crisis. Um, and in that case, our undergraduate placement rate was more like 60% and our MBA was 50%. So we're doing a little better than that. But um, uh, frankly, it's been it's been really a uh, an all out um, uh, uh, effort by our uh, amazing uh, placement staff, and uh, and and really an all hands on deck um, uh, effort when you when you look at how involved our alumni relations and our development people um, have also been in trying to work, as, in particular with our alumni. Um, who've been our best partners in trying to find uh, students uh, internships and jobs in this uh, um, in this uh, very unusual unusual period, um, and and I'd just like to extend the invitation to uh, to any of you out there, um, if you uh, or your firm or or connections that you have might be able to help us to find um, internships or full time placement for our students. Uh, Please do get in touch with us um, on the on the placement front. Um, if your if your firm has uh, internship or full time opportunities, or you know someone that might, um, I encourage you to get in touch with uh, Kara Primrose, who's the head of our career services, and there's her her email is right there. Um, and also uh, to to help a lot of the students that are still looking. Um, we are we are looking for for mentors, both uh, both folks that want to do um, kind of one on one relationship mentoring, as well as uh, um, more transactional, um, uh, you know, spending some time talking with some of our students on a, on a, on a one on one basis, um, maybe even a small group basis. And so if you're interested in, in helping us to uh, to mentor some of our students who are, fr frankly, uh, facing a uh, they, 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 they were expecting to graduate into the best, one of the best job markets of all time, and have found themselves in quite a different situation. Um, so if you can, if, if you would uh, be willing to help them, please do get in touch with Allison Kessler, who's our uh, uh, alumni relations lead. And um, she has set up some virtual mentoring opportunities that, uh, that we, would, uh, we would be delighted to have, have your help with. Um, so let's uh, let, let's move from from there to uh, to other activities and, and things that are going around the school, uh, well, and around the university. So here's a here's a picture of talk about progress. Here's a picture of the of the new dome and um, the, uh, the 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 new halo that looks like, you know looks a little bit like we installed a new. Uh, a new ride um, uh, here on campus for the students, but it's not. It's, it's, it's actually the support structure for our new dome. You may recall our old dome was uh, um, held up by air pressure, pretty much. But um, uh, this is a this new dome is uh, is has uh, got its own suspension system. So which means which means when you walk in and out of the dorm uh, in and out of the dome these days, there's there's no uh, you don't have to go through the compression chambers and things. We actually can have the doors open and uh, and let the outside air in and all that all that all that good stuff. But um, so it's fabulous to see this go up and the, and the inside of it is even more spectacular with the new uh, with the new uh, scoreboard and everything. Um, back a little a little closer to the school to kind of give you a, a quick rundown on, on what we're doing um, and what's what's changing here at, at the uh, at, at Whitman. Um, a few years ago um, we developed our our strategy a new strategy for the school. Uh, it was kind of a community-wide effort um, to craft a, a new set of, of aspirations and strategic initiatives for the school. And we've called the strategic plan our our roadmap to Whitman's second century, which uh, we celebrated our our hundredth anniversary of our first class uh, just over a year ago. Um, so this strategic plan is really about how do we how do we start this new this new this new century? And um, so our overriding purpose, um, and I, I used this. I have to update my graphic here because this is this is a uh, you know based on uh, this is loosely based on our on our on our wonderful dome there's uh, there's there's auto um, 
and and uh, so I, I guess I have to update what the roof looks like here. But but you say our so our overarching goal. We've decided our purpose is that we need what we need to do is inspire students for this ever changing world. Our students students our students that are here on campus today are going to be graduating into the most dynamic diverse and interconnected uh, economy, re really in the history of, of, of mankind. And so um, we, we need to, we need to um, be preparing them for that. And that's, that's really kind of the most sacred trust that these students and their parents are, are giving to us as faculty and staff here at the school. Um, and so we, uh, we committed to that as our, as our overriding purpose. And, um, and they're really kind of three pillars that, um, that we're uh, that that are the basis for our for our strategy. We say we want to be an excellent business school, a relevant business school, and an exemplary business school. And um, the uh, and and then each one of those is broken down into three major initiatives, which I'll talk I'll, I'll talk about briefly as we go through. So let me talk a little bit about what we've done to uh, to to try to become a, an even more excellent, relevant, and, and exemplary kind of business school. Um, First pillar is pursuing excellence, um, which really uh, comes down to three things, building the faculty of the future, um, uh, creating a program portfolio that's um, responsive to where the world is going and where the market is going. And then uh, something we call Project Agile, which is basically uh, making sure that all of our programs are preparing students to be uh, re really agile, global, innovative, uh, you know, life lifelong learners and and and, and entrepreneurs. And um, so what we've been able to do so far along those lines, some of the highlights, uh, we've hired 18 new faculty in the in the last the last few years, about 10 of those are, are net uh, adds to the place. Um, and we have more that are that, that are approved, and six of these are what we call cluster hires. These are going to be interdisciplinary hires, um, uh, focused in three key areas of our strategy: one around business analytics, another around business innovation, and then a third around uh, social social justice and diversity and uh, and and inclusion. And so we're very excited about being able to bring these kinds of new faculty onto, on, onto campus to, uh, um, to help to push our curriculum and push our research um, in, in, the, uh, in, in the direction that we need to go if we're gonna, if we're gonna prepare students for this, for this ever-changing world. Um, to, to help those faculty, we've, uh, we created a, uh, a mission-driven research grant program, which has pools of, of research money for our faculty, um, but both to support actually um, research and to support uh, uh, new teaching in the areas, particularly of business analytics, business innovation, and diversity and inclusion. Um, and then some of the new programs that we launched, we started new masters uh, in marketing, um, created an online uh, version of our supply chain program. Um, hoping that if, if nothing else, if, if there's a, some of the silver linings of the pandemic may make things like supply chain uh, that much more uh, important and a lot more students looking for that, I hope. Um, we also started a new major, uh, which just started this, this fall, the first class has started being offered um, in business analytics for, for undergraduate. Um, and then uh, another important um, uh, place we've been investing is in expanding recruiting um, and, uh, and placement staff to strengthen our, our graduate programs all the way across the board. So excellence is, uh, of course, all of our, of our peer schools are also pursuing excellence. So in some ways, the pursuit of excellence is, uh, is the ante in this, in this game that we're playing. Um, we are pursuing it in a particular way uh, with our focus on business innovation, business analytics, um, things like diversity and inclusion that we think are important to the future of business and to the future success of our students. But we need to do we need to do more. And um, so we're doing that by trying to increase the relevance of our of our programs, um, in particular, to try to be more interdisciplinary and more experiential. And so that's why the, 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 the three initiatives that we have under increasing relevance have to do with engaging the other great uh, schools and colleges that are here on campus. Like uh, we've just added some dual majors with arts and sciences um, and with Maxwell. 
Uh, we also just created a, a couple of years ago now a, a joint uh, program in real estate with the School of Architecture um, and announced uh, one of the well the first um, online JD MBA in the in the nation with the with with the School of Law. So some great interdisciplinary uh, initiatives going on. Um, and, and it's something that takes, I think, advantage of one of the great strengths that Syracuse has always had. Um, and then the other thing we're doing is we're trying to do more and more experiential learning, because if we want students, we figure we have to prepare students to be more entrepreneurial, digital, global, and, and the best way to do that is, is through experiential learning. Um, and so in particular, we've been focused on, on experiential learning in New York City. Um, getting our students down there for uh, for everything from uh, kind of uh, a day in the life experience uh, with one of our alumni in an industry that they might be interested in, to more um, a more extensive uh, career immersion kind of programs, um, to taking classes and doing class projects down in New York. And then um, probably the, the the flagship program for us um, is is going to be our what we're calling a, a instead of study abroad we're calling it study away um, uh, basically a full semester in New York City um, where the students are taking classes um, in many cases uh, um, taught with the help of a lot of great guest lecturing from our from our alumni. Um, and also set up in internships with our with our alumni. So we actually piloted that this spring, um, although unfortunately because of the pandemic had to pull the plug in March and uh, and the second half of the semester was 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 virtual. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep we're gonna keep trying and building that out over the over the next few years. So um, some real exciting developments there. And then so on on top so so. Um, being excellent gives is kind of the ante um, for our for the game we're playing and the strategy that we're pursuing. Um, being relevant uh, distinguishes us, um, especially with what we're doing with uh, interdisciplinary programs and experiential learning from many of our peer schools and colleges out there, peer business schools. The other thing we want to do is we want to be an, an exemplary uh, um, community, exemplary environment. Um, so that our students know what a, an exemplary community is like before they go they go out into the world. And um, just some of the things that we've been, uh, some of the, the accomplishments so far, um, we're really uh, working very hard to increase our undergraduate and grad student diversity. Um, I, think, I think the area where we've been most successful in the last few years is we've increased the percentage of women in the undergraduate business program, the, the percentage uh, coming in in a particular year from about 35% to this year, I think the figure was closer to 47, 48%. So almost to, uh, to, to a balanced entering class, which is, which is just fantastic. But we've also had very good improvements in our, uh, in our underrepresented minority um, figures um, coming from a low level and, and still not quite where we wanna be but um, both our African-American and Hispanic student uh, percentages have, uh, have, have increased as well. Um, it's not enough to, uh, to bring a diverse set of students to campus. We wanna create, create a inclusive environment and a culture of belonging here on campus. And, uh, and, and so to, uh, to help us to uh, um, uh, create, create that, um, that kind of environment, we have created a new position um, for uh, an executive director of institutional culture. Um, I actually cleared out the, uh, the, the conference room next to my office. Um, and, uh, and that's where our new executive director, Diane Crawford, um, is, is, is sitting. Um, to help her, we formed a, a one Whitman Council of faculty, staff, and students um, with the responsibility of, uh, of, of building and enhancing and, and creating the kind of culture that we want here at the school. And um, one of the things that they've, they've already accomplished um, uh, in the first, first actually this in their, in their first year, uh, so, so this was done a, a, just a year ago, um, identified and promoted five core values for, for the Whitman community and are doing a broad series of things to um, uh, in, drive those values down, down into the community so that they're not just uh, banners in, uh, in, in Flam Grand Hall. Um, those of you who have been to the campus, uh, haven't been to the campus in the last year or so, 
um, but but had visited Flaum uh, before that would have would have seen the uh, Impress House banners. Um, we've moved the Impress House display up to the second floor of the building where many of our undergraduate uh, classes are held and are all of our undergraduate support services are. And um, these are now the, uh, the the banners that that hang in our uh, in Flam Grand Hall, um, representing the, the the five core values that um, that we've identified for our community: um, integrity, inclusion, collaboration. Um, those being kind of our foundational uh, values, uh, and the three values that you need to drive innovation and achieve excellence, which are our other two values. So that gives you some sense of of, of some of the progress that we've made over the last few years. Um, for, the, for this year, some of the things we're, we're working on, um, our top priority, uh, really our overriding priority is to safeguard the health of the, of the Whitman community, our, our students, our faculty, our staff, um, uh, while, while offering the best possible student learning and, and professional development opportunities to our students. Um, with that being kind of the number one priority, the, the other, I called them provisional priorities because that top one is so important to us. Um, the other ones that we're, that we're working on, um, we're, we're uh, especially in light of, uh, of what's happened um, uh, with uh, the uh, racial equity movement uh, across, the, across the country, um, we're really trying to accelerate our diversity, equity, inclusion plans here at the at the school. Um, we had very robust um, diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion uh, plan as part of our strategic plan. Um, and uh, if the, the 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 current environment, what happened um, uh, over the over the over the summer months and into the fall, um, has really just given us. Uh, a, a lot of tailwind, a lot of motivation to um, pursue our diversity, equity, inclusion action plans even more rapidly than we than we were. Um, we're also doing things to uh, um, kind of enhance uh, our support for our for our faculty because they are they are our most important asset, um, and 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 especially to support them. Uh, as they uh, work to um, to figure out how, to, how their research education needs to adapt to make sure that we're delivering on our promise to inspire students for this for this ever changing world, um, we're also going to, we're also working on new program innovations uh, with, with re respect to our roadmap, making sure that we're um, uh, offering more even more interdisciplinary um, kinds of programs, for example and um, perhaps even some more online uh, opportunities for, uh, for, for folks to access what, what, we, what we can do here at, at Whitman. And then, then finally, another priority, um, you know, I said earlier, we're, we're, we're kind of now in the third stage of the crisis. If, if the first stage was firefighting and the second stage was full mobilization to reopen the campus, it's always the third stage is, okay, we're now we're, we're in a pandemic, it's going to last for a while. Um, and even once it subsides, uh, the world is going to be changed. So what is it that we need to do differently in order to uh, put, be, be preparing our students for, uh, for the world that they're entering? So um, I think the, the, the big questions that we're, we're starting to think about here at the school and, and you know, uh, obviously our alumni can be of great help in helping us to think through this is, now that we've kind of, of, of crested the rise um, and, and are kind of looking to the future is, is asking what are the most pressing COVID-19 related questions facing business these days? You know, everything from how do we, especially if we're a fixed capacity service, how do we, how do we stay in business? Um, uh, um, but, but even more mundane things such as off, you know, um, headquarters and office, what, what's going to happen to the to the nine to five work week going forward and how are people going to interact as the pandemic um, continues and then subsides in the future. So um, understanding that will help us to better understand what it is that we need to do differently to prepare students for success in, uh, in a post COVID-19 uh, world. Um, uh, and uh, and then on, so that's on the education front um, and the co-curricular front, professional development front. 
And then on the research front, um, we also want to be thinking about what are what are the research topics that um, we want to provide support to Whitman faculty so that they can they can address and we can be out in front on um, all the way across the board. And then, of course, you know, looking looking at our own uh, school and our own operations, everything from how we deliver education to how we support our students and one another. How should how should we change our core activities, given what we've learned from the experience with with COVID COVID nineteen? So, so with that, I think I've got about ten minutes left. I went a little longer than I than I than I expected. Um, you know, I'd love to answer any questions that anybody might have out there. Um, but before I do that, I just want to thank all of you for uh, for all. So many of you I know have helped us as as we've got gone through this uh, through this crisis. Um, whether it's um, uh, helping helping our students with uh, with with jobs, um, uh, maybe it's 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 through your your you know including us as part of your philanthropy. That's also been very important right now. Um, uh, whether uh, whether we've been adapting. Um, what we do to better teach our students or support our students, um, or in many cases, provide additional financial support and COVID-19 relief to our students, your philanthropic, philanthropic support has been, has been key to allowing us to do that. Um, and, and, you know, going, going forward, as always, our alumni will remain our, our, our various, very best partners. So we can't thank you enough for all you do for us, um, but, 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 but thank you. With that, I'll, I'll stop and see, I've got, I, I can see I have one, one question in the, um, oh, in the, in, in the, in the chat, and it's uh, whether we have any tips on securing spring remote internships and jobs after, after graduation. Um, uh, cer cer certainly are, uh, you know, if, if, if you're talking about a, a particular student who's looking for uh, internships and jobs right now, we you know, very much encourage them to uh, get in touch with Allison Kessler and um, we can hook them up with uh, some of the virtual mentoring that's going on. That would be, that would be one way that we could, uh, we, could, we could certainly help with that. Um, there are other questions. I would be, I would be, uh, I would be happy to. Um, you can type them into the 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 the, the Q and A, and um, be happy to happy to answer them. All right. Well, if 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 not, um, I'm going to thank everyone for uh, for taking time to join us today. Um, you know, it's always uh, great to have a have an opportunity and a chance to uh, to speak with our with our alumni. So thank you for taking some time out of your day to be to be with us. Again, we wish we could we could have you all here on 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 campus. It would be uh, that would be amazing and and, and wonderful. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, to do that. Um, but when we when we um, are in October of uh, of, of 2021. Um, until then, um, we will we will keep a light on for you. Here at uh, here here at Syracuse, and um, I wish you all the best um, throughout throughout the rest of the rest of the year. And I wish you um, good health and uh, and and uh, you know a, a safe uh, uh, rest of of 2020 and into 2021. Thank you all very much. Bye bye, and go Orange. <laughs>